Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Welcome to the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe, and I'm sure you have heard of the saying, live every single day like it's your last, or live life like you're dying. We all know we're going to die. It's inevitable, right? So are we making the most of it? That's why I want to talk to you today about living in alignment with the purpose of life itself. Are you living in alignment with life's purpose? What exactly is life's purpose, you're probably wondering. No, there is no actual meaning of life. We all look at it in a different way. We all see things differently and get affected by things differently. Um, A lot of people will say that happiness is the purpose of life. And I would say that's definitely a great start. You know, we're building relationships and experiencing things. We're growing and we're letting things affect us and we affect other people. And we go through every single day just learning new things and seeing new things, talking to new people, growing like with ourselves and with others. But matter of fact, we can't actually pinpoint the exact purpose of life. But we can determine the way that we use it. So are we using it correctly? Are we wasting our time? Let's take a look at how kids look at life. Have you ever talked to a little toddler about life? Have you just asked them a question? How are you? Are you happy? What did you do today? You know, their answers are always so simple, so easy, with a big smile on their face. You know, maybe chocolate (laughs) smeared across their face, and they're just so excited and so happy about everything, about life itself. They're so carefree. They're running around, they're playing, not a worry in the world. There's no stresses. Most of the time, they're enjoying every single minute of it. Of course, unless they bonk their heads or something like that, but that's kids. But they always have a positive outlook. They always see life as this great thing, right? They're just not worrying. They're not looking at the negatives ever. It's just pure pleasure. It's pure happiness. But are we confusing pleasure with happiness? Or are we confusing pleasure and happiness with the purpose of life itself? Well, it's all about living in alignment with life's purpose. So are you living in alignment with life's purpose? Ask yourself, if you're constantly asking, is this this it? Is this really all life has to offer? Is this really all the world is going to give me? Maybe you get bored easily. Maybe you're waking up for your corporate job every single day that you hate and it's boring and you're hating your appearance and you're hating your relationships and you're hating yourself and you just, you're like, really? This is, this is terrible. It's dragging on. Life is dragging on for me. Is this really it? Is this all life has to offer me? Or maybe you're hitting really high highs and really low lows. You know, you'll have a few days of pure enjoyment and happiness. You're on cloud nine. You're on top of the world. You got accepted to a brand new job or you fell in love with somebody and you feel so great. And then all of a sudden, it just all, it all ends. You go from living, feeling like you're empowered and invincible and then you just crash. Everything's wrong. You're not enough. This job isn't enough. He's not what I thought he was like. I'm not actually in love. Life sucks. And then all of a sudden you're up again. And then you're down again. It's a roller coaster. Your highs are really, really high, but your lows are really, really low. 
This means you're not living in alignment with the purpose of life. Are you always wanting more? Nothing is ever enough. Your job, your promotion, your relationship, your appearance, the opportunities that are thrown at you, maybe your family life, your business life, financially, it's just never enough. You're always wanting more. Well, then you're not living in alignment with the purpose of life. Are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Are you surrounding yourself with people that bring you down? That don't have any purpose themselves? That don't don't look at life in a positive aspect? Or don't have a good perspective on life? And they're just constantly bringing you down? Maybe they're constantly being negative? If you're surrounding yourself with the people that look at life as this negative thing, as if there is no purpose to life then you're going to be in a negative state of mind as well and negative things are going to happen to you. So are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Maybe you're living in fear of growth and moving on. Maybe you're constantly stuck in the same place because you just don't want to move. You're comfortable. Or you're constantly living in the past. You look back at all of your past experiences and things that happened to you way back then and you're like, ah, I'm just going to stay here. I'm comfortable. Maybe you don't forgive others or maybe you don't forgive yourself. You hold glut, you hold grudges. You know, you, you can't let go because you don't want to move on. You don't want to see what else is out there. You're, you're stuck in your rut. You're stuck in your little spot and that's it. You think about the past and you dwell on it your whole day. Well, then you're not living in alignment with life. Maybe you're constantly saying, I'll be happier when. I'll be happier if. I'll be happier when this happens or if this happens or when I meet somebody or when I get that dream job. I'll be happier then. Well, then you're not living in alignment with life's purpose. So what can you do? How can you live in alignment with life's purpose? Well, I think a really good place to start is living through your values. Ask yourself, what do I value? What is important to you? What is your morals? What makes you happy? Maybe you like creating connections or you like striving at your job. You need to ask yourself, what is important to you? What makes you happy? What makes you excited? Find those values and start to live with them every single day. Live through them. Constantly have them on your mind. If you don't know your values, you don't know exactly what's important to you, well then experiment. Ask questions. You know, be outside the box. Think outside the box. Live outside your comfort zone. Explore. Experience. Meet new people. Just get out there and, and start to experiment and try new things. And you, you'll find what you're passionate about, what you value, and then live through that. Another thing that we can do is combine our strengths with our passion. We see happy people and a lot of the time they're using their strengths in their passion, in their everyday life. So think about it. What are you good at? Because we all know that when we're good at something, it makes us happy. And we enjoy doing it more because because we're good at it. We feel like we're it's one of our talents or that's something that we just really enjoy doing so we're good at it. Well, then keep doing that. You can always apply your strengths to your everyday life. And if you don't know your strengths or you want to learn new ones, well then, push outside your comfort zone. Live outside your comfort zone. Experiment. Experience. Meet new people. Explore. Get out there and learn what you're good at and what you want to do and just keep applying that to your everyday life. And you need to avoid validation. Stop living with the thought of what are, what are other people doing or what are, uh, what are other people going to think of me? How is this going to, how am I going to portray myself? How are people going to view me because of this? Become indifferent of other people's opinions. Don't be influenced. Don't see what someone, one of your coworkers are doing or a family member or just a friend, what they're doing and, and automatically think that you need to do something like that too. 
or else you're not going to be successful or happy or in alignment with life. Stop looking for validation. Stop looking for a high five or a pat on the back. Just live your life the way that you want to live it. That's all you can do. You're going to be in line with yourself, how you truly are and how you truly feel. And then you'll be aligned with life's purpose as well. This is your life. You get to decide the purpose of it. You get to make the most out of every single thing you're doing. So live it the way you want to. But live it with passion and force. The motivation to make life exactly what you want. Live life like you're dying. Live life like it's your last every single day. And then you really are going to be living in alignment with life's purpose. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. We all worry. People think it's normal or it's human to worry. But worrying is a waste of time. Wasting time worrying about things that could happen but probably won't, most likely won't. What is the point of that? What's normal or human is being in the moment, being present, living day to day, minute by minute. Not looking into the past, not stressing about the future, living in the exact moment. So let's talk about why worrying is holding you back. Holding you back from living the life that you really want to. Think back to older times. Were they worrying? Were they thinking about, you know, their bills or or being a better student or a better parent or a better friend? Or were they stressing about those things way back when? No, they weren't. Society nowadays makes us overthink. Social media, appearance, what you should be doing or not doing. It's it's affecting us every single day. Our society has created this this thing that we look at, you know, especially with social media, like you look at somebody's Instagram and you think that you should be doing exactly what they're doing because it looks like they're living this extravagant life and you should live this extravagant life and every single photo should be perfect and your appearance should be perfect and, you know, you should be going on trips or you should be the CEO of your company or whatever it may be. Society builds these things around us that makes us think that That's the kind of life that we have to have. So we constantly worry. Oh, I'm not the perfect student. I'm not the perfect parent. I'm not the perfect friend. I'm stressed out all the time. What is wrong with me? I can't, I don't go traveling all the time. But how is worrying about all that serving you? Is it helping you create that life? No. Worrying is just, it's stopping you from actually going to your full potential think about it worrying is adding stress and thinking about stress and worrying adds more stress if you're thinking about being perfect or what's going to happen next it only brings more of a burden into your life if you're constantly worrying about oh what if i don't get that job what if i don't ace that test what if i don't get that promotion what's the point You're not moving forward. Worrying isn't making you grow more. All you have 
is this moment right now. We're not guaranteed the next 10 minutes. We're not guaranteed the next three minutes. What we're guaranteed is this present moment and how we live life in it and how we make the most out of it. So what can you do in this very moment to make you happy? What would make you happy right now? By infusing your thoughts with fear and worrying, you're losing valuable time in life. Life is short. We all know that. But do we really know that? We're all going to die one day. Like I said, we, we all know that. But do we really, really know that? Do we wake up every single day feeling like, you know, this could be my last. So how am I going to make the most of it? Maybe some of us do. Not a lot of us because we're worrying about that test or we're worrying about what happened three months ago or two years ago or worrying about five years down the road. We're not living for the moment. So why are we thinking and worrying about moments that already happened or that we're not guaranteed? All we're guaranteed is right now. You should be waking up every single day thinking about how am I going to get the most out of today? How am I going to make this the best day? And no, of course, not every day is going to be perfect. Things are going to happen. That's life. Obstacles will be thrown at you. But think about it. Think about this moment. What can you do right now to make sure you're going to be happy right now? Not in five years from now. Not in two years from now or later on down the road when you have a, you know, your dream job or something like that. Don't think about that. Think about right now. You need to be aware that you are going to die one day and that you need to make sure that every single time and moment that you have right now is worth it, is that you're making your life worth it while to you. Be aware every single day, no matter what. Free yourself from worry and stop focusing on what could because it probably won't. Or stop thinking about what did Because there's no point that's in the past. It's changed. Sometimes we don't even actually realize that we're worrying. And it holds us back until it's too late. Our brain is constantly trying to protect us. Our subconscious is constantly protecting us. Our brains automatically process things, process the things that we worry about as a threat. So... If we're overthinking things and we're worrying about stuff, we're stressed out about things, you know, our mind is saying that's a threat and that we're, you know, it holds us back. It stops us. So listen to your gut. What is your first instinct? Ask yourself one question and what is your first answer? It is, life is black and white. It's yes or no. It's black and white. There's no gray area. It's either you're doing it or you're not doing it. It's either you're worrying and sitting back is not doing. It's a no if you're doing that. Or you're taking action and you're going after what you want. That's a yes. It's black and white. It's yes or no. It's you're doing it or you're not doing it. So worrying, waiting around, contemplating, being undecisive, like indecisive. Are you waiting for the perfect moment? Well, there's not going to be a perfect moment. If you are waiting for a perfect moment, that's no. It's black or white. It's yes or no. So what can we do to change this? Well, ask yourself, how are you reacting? And what happens if you believe that thought? So if you're worrying about something, ask, ask yourself, okay, how, how does this make me feel? What happens when I'm believing that? Does it make you feel crappy? To make you feel angry or sad or stressed. Maybe you're jealous and envious. Check in with yourself. Do you really want to feel those ways? What can you do to change those feelings? Because worrying about that, what's the point of it? it makes you feel like you feel crappy. Life's about being, you know, you got to be happy and you want to live everything to the fullest. So why live in crappy moments? when we can make those those moments positive. So if you're worrying about something and it makes you feel terrible about yourself, then why are you doing it? Try asking yourself, 
who would I be without this thought, without this worry? Would you be happier? Would you be less stressed? Maybe be content or proud. Whatever it may be, check in with yourself. If it is going to make you feel happier, not worrying about it, well, then there you go. You're going to be feeling less stressed. You're going to be feeling more content, more proud, because you don't need this worry, because it makes you feel crappy. And now ask yourself, is this going to matter in five years down the road? Am I going to care this much in five years? And remember, when you ask yourself that question, life is black and white. It's either black or white. It's either yes or no. It's either you're doing it or you're not doing it. Yes. So you ask yourself that question, yes, I am going to care about this five years down the road. Okay, so now you need to figure out a way to tackle it. No. Okay, then now you need to figure out a way to change your mindset and stop worrying about it. Don't let your subconscious win. Don't let it protect you. Of course, worrying doesn't just, you can't just stop worrying overnight. It's something that we live with on a day-to-day basis. But we need to remind ourselves that worrying isn't normal. Worrying about every single thing all the time, about the future, about the past, that's not normal. Being present is normal and human. Connecting with what you feel in that very moment or what's around you in that very moment, that's real. That's human. That's natural. Be present with yourself. Check in. And check in with how those worries are making you feel. If they're making you feel crappy, you need to change your mindset. If it's something that you do really care about and you need to figure out, well, then you need to sit down and you need to tackle it and you need to figure it out. It's black or white. It's yes or no. It's either you're doing it or you're not doing it. Sitting back and just worrying about things, first of all, you're not going to be productive. You're not going to be getting anything done. So why would you? What's the point of that? If it makes you feel crappy, you got to try to change your mindset and tackle it in a new way. It's black or white. It's yes or no. I'm doing it or I'm not doing it. I'm happy or I'm sad. I'm going to let this this worry, this thought ruin my day. Or I'm going to not let this worry or thought ruin my day and I'm going to have a great rest of my day. Because I'm living in the moment. What makes you happy right now? What would make you happy in this very moment? You need to live every single day like you're, like you're going to die. Like it's your last Because worrying will hold you back in life. And you're not going to be happy if you're being held back and you're not succeeding to your full potential. So remember, it's black or white. It's yes or no. How is this worry or this thought affecting you? How is it serving you in a positive or negative way? Think about it. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. subject to interpretation, right? When we meet someone, when we go to a new place, when we experience something, we perceive all the information from all of them, from all those things. It's not about what happens, 
but it's about what we are paying attention to and then the way that we interpretate that and ultimately how you act on it or react to it. So our emotions, are we happy, are we sad, are we angry, are we jealous? It's your interpretation on things. You're constantly interpreting every single thing that you see. So how we perceive things is strongly influenced by past experiences, education, culture, values. Perception is reality. So how do we make the kind of reality that we want out of our perception? Your world is what your mind says. Your world is your thoughts, right? So when you when you look at something and you take that information in and you're perceiving it in a certain way, you're having this thought process. Your mind is going, right? Well, that's how that's how we're looking at that thing. That's how we're perceiving it. So all of our thoughts, our beliefs, behaviors, they all have the most influence on your perception of life. So check in. How are you feeling when you are interpreting something? What are your thoughts? How does it make you feel? How is it affecting you? So perception can be defined as the process of getting, interpreting, selecting, and organizing sensory information. So collecting data from sense organs through the interpretation made by the brain. Okay? So we're we're perceiving things. We're, We're... attaining information we're retaining that information inside of us so we can per- we perceive ourselves and we perceive others and we perceive our world so when we perceive ourselves it's called introspection we're looking inwards on feelings and thoughts so it's our personal experiences our inner thoughts our inner emotions how we're feeling right so the way that you perceive yourself is all internally It's in us. It's what you're thinking. It's what you're feeling. So let's say if you see yourself as someone who is very kind and outgoing, well, then you're going to go out of your way to be kind and outgoing to everyone. Even if sometimes it's not always in your best interest or it harms you or maybe it belittles you or something. It's not in your best interest all the time. Maybe it makes you push down how you're really feeling inside or and it starts to bottle your emotions because you perceive yourself as this outgoing, loud, kind person to everyone. So you, you really try to portray that and you try to force that out even when it's not right. We try so hard to stay aligned with a certain perception of ourselves that we do things out of a need to find the balance within ourselves. We're looking, we're trying to be aligned with ourselves, right? So if we perceive ourselves as this outgoing person, we're going we're gonna to force that. We want to find a balance within ourselves. So it's forced sometimes, right? So now how do we perceive others? So this is called extrospection. We're looking outwards, external behavior. The way that we perceive others has numerous amount of factors to it, like their characteristics, the context or scenario, our personality traits, you know, the situation, the time, the place. Perceiving others and how we do that, how we are retaining that information, we're sensing all that information. It, it, it all depends on all these factors, but we're looking outwards. They are external behaviors. So let's say first impressions. You know, I could, there's a lot of people out there that, oh, I didn't like that first impression. I didn't like that person. Or, you know, that first impression was so good. I don't, and then later on down the road, you know, maybe they're completely different and you don't understand, right? We tend to judge on first impressions. It's, it's pretty natural to judge on a first impression because we think, oh, I'm listening to my gut. I'm listening to my, my first instinct on him, right? So the first impression can make a very lasting impact. That's really hard to shake because a lot of the time we are trying to listen to our gut. We're, we are trying to listen to our first instinct. So this is related to the halo effect in which a person's initial positive perception in one thing carries through to similarly positive perceptions in the future, whether they're warranted or not. So if we have this great first impression on somebody that's that that's our perception on them, right? We we think that that it's great. They they gave us we retain that information great. We think that person is awesome. So now later on down the road, that that's in our mind. That's that's what we how we perceive them. 
So now we're stuck with that in our mind, right? And our perception can definitely change, of course. But with impressions, it, this can do in reverse as well. So if a negative first impression is made, it becomes difficult to replace with a positive one, right? We, you know, we meet somebody and uh, they're really nasty to us. Well, now that's stuck in our mind. That was our first impression of them. That was our first perception of them, how we, per- how we perceived them at the very first moment. So now that's stuck with us. And sometimes that can be terrible because maybe they just had a bad day and they weren't themselves. But we have a hard time replacing that negative perception with a positive one because it's our first impression. It's the first way that we perceive somebody. So unfortunately, like this halo effect, it it can distort reality, right? The way that we perceive things at first, our first impressions can really distort reality. These false impressions are the reasons why like con artists can fool so many victims or someone can you know, do you wrong so many times. It's all about perception. So how do we perceive our world? How do you perceive your life? If you perceive your life is lacking what you need, you worry more about conserving what you would rather have than attaining those things of what you actually want or need. So we're constantly thinking that life isn't giving me what I want. This isn't what I need well, then we're looking, we're perceiving life in a different way. If we have a continuous bad day over and over and over again, well, then we're going to continue to have a bad day over and over and over again because that's how we're perceiving the information. If we're perceiving everything negatively, well, then, yeah, we're going to continuously have bad days. But So we need to try to change our mindset so that we are perceiving things differently. We're changing our thoughts and our beliefs, our behaviors, because that's what most influences your, your perception, your thoughts, your behaviors, your beliefs. So if you want to change your perception, change your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs on something, and you can try to change your perception on it. How you perceive your world, it influences your attitude. It affects what you attract. So if you're perceiving negativity, you're going to get negativity right? It's all about the energy and perceiving positive things so we can, we can attain and attract positive things. So that's why we need to be careful of stereotypes. We perceive things that are common to us. We perceive things that, are, that we think is most common, what's likely supposed to happen. That's how we see something, right? So if we go into something or we think that we know something, it can easily influence the way that we perceive things. If someone, and that's another thing with don't let others influence you. Because if someone's telling you, oh, this person was nasty to me, well, then now we're going into the scenario thinking that this person is not very nice. Because now we're going to perceive what's common to us. And it could distort our reality. Because perception is reality. The way that we perceive ourselves, others, our world, that is our reality. Our mind is creating our reality, right? So another thing you need to be careful about is tunnel vision. Do we only want to see something a certain way? This can be a defense mechanism for a lot of people. We don't want to see it, see it in other light, so we have tunnel vision. This is the only way. This is the way, and that's it. And a lot of the time, this is protecting us from ourselves, um, we, we block everything out because we don't want to perceive in- information because we internally don't want to deal with it. So we don't let it, we don't let ourselves deal with it. We perceive it in a different light, in a different way. So we don't have to deal with those things, which is, which is of course not, not right. So are you in- interpreting things for your own benefit? Because the way that you want to perceive something that you have that in your head, now you've made a bias interpretation. Because you want to back up your own beliefs and values. You don't want to be wrong. None of us like being wrong. Let's be real here. We all want to be right, of course. So maybe we're, so then we perceive things through a tunnel vision because we don't want to admit that we're wrong. We don't want to go against what we thought we believed or our values because we just, we don't want to do that. We protect ourselves, right? 
So be careful of tunnel vision and stereotypes because that's really going to affect the way that we're perceiving our world and we're attaining our information. We can only control that the way we perceive ourselves in our world. We can't control the way others perceive us. So it's all about you. What's your world? What's your reality? What's your reality on yourself? What do you see? What do you feel? It's all about your feelings and your emotions and your thoughts about it. Perspective and perception is different. Perspective, you're getting a different view on something. But perception, you are interpreting something, which is influenced by, like I said, your past, your experience, your thoughts, your feelings. So we're not just trying to look at something different. We're trying to feel something different. Feel, get that thought process differently. We're going to make more positive impacts in our life and positive changes if we can perceive things differently. Perceive things in a positive light. We can believe and feel those things. Not just look at it. Not just think that we want it or that we want it that way. You've got to perceive this information positively. Your world is created by the lens that you, like, that you look through every single day. You see the world through a certain lens. That's how you're perceiving your information through this lens. So if you're having a terrible day, you created that terrible day. Nothing else, no one else. You did that to yourself. And maybe somebody else would love to have that terrible day. Because maybe they their, their day is a lot worse than yours. They've been through a lot more. We create our bad days. We create those things because of, of the way that we perceive information. The way that we... Don't just look at information or view information. It's the way that we feel about something. So you got to internally feel different. Our perception is our reality. So if we can change our perception, we can change our day. We can do this by changing our attitude and our feelings and our thoughts. Check in with yourself. How are you feeling? How does perceiving this information make me feel? Does it connect with my values and my beliefs? Am I perceiving this information in a biased way? Do I have tunnel vision? It's all things that you need to constantly ask yourself. I'm going to leave you with a Thomas DeWar quote. Minds are like parachutes. They work best when open. Open your mind. Experience new things. Perceive information in all kinds of lights. Feel information. How does that thing make me feel? Check in with yourself. Check in with your gut. How does that really make me feel? Is it in alignment with life's purpose? Am I worrying too much about it? Am I perceiving this information correctly? Positively? Check in. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast. Like I said, I am your host, Alyssa Joe. And if you did like the Life and Happiness podcast, please subscribe, like, and follow us on social media. And don't forget to leave a five-star review. I look forward to next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.